rubbish and this bola bola and plastic in our country. Welcome back to New Day. And as you saw right before this, um, plastics continue to be a major challenge to waste management in the country. My colleague Wendy Lai was at Kolegono in Accra to assess the plastic pollution situation ahead of the president's announcement of Ghana's plastic policy on October 1st. That's today. This is the state of the seashore at Kolegono here in Accra. Marine debris have been washed ashore. The debris which includes plastics is a problem for several communities including Kolegono. The seafloor and its impact is of global significance. Over here, individuals have collected plastics to be sold to recycling companies or persons in need of it. On October 1, President Tokufuado is supposed to announce Ghana's approach focused on curtailing plastic pollution in the country. Ahead of the announcement, we're here at Kolegono to speak to residents and find out their expectations and if indeed they think Ghana can deal with the plastic pollution menace. When the recycling people try to help, it will reduce that plastic waste in the city. <laughs> Plastic. We should support companies to invest in recycling. This can cut down on waste in drains, which are washed into the sea. We don't want any uh, rubbish and this bola bola uh, plastic in our country. So we want to move forward. As we come together as one, we can deal, we, uh, we can deal with it. We can deal with this uh, problem. If the government puts money inside, the assembly members, they should talk to them so that they will talk to the people about the plastic waste. In the midst of all the concerns raised, some individuals and birds scavenged for what is most valuable to them. One of such individuals benefiting from the sale of used plastic bottles is Fifi. He's been on the job for two months. Although fairly new on the job, he's able to locate the plastic bottles as the seconds go by. One kilo and 50 pesos. We wear the used plastic bottles first, and sell a kilo for 50 pesos. Trained as a tiler, he ended up here due to unemployment. Despite the benefits to people like Fifi, plastic pollution is a menace in the country. According to UNDP, Ghana currently produces 1.7 million tons of plastic waste annually, of which only 2% is recycled. The problem is compounded during heavy rains when it is washed into the sea. The president of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly, Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces, has backed calls for a total ban on single-use plastics as a way to deal with the plastic waste menace in Ghana. Just close by is the Koli Lagoon. Its current state tells a story of the effects of marine debris, including plastics. Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation has reiterated government's stance on the issue, maintaining that government has no intention to completely ban its use due to its wide usage and contribution to the economy. But is there likely to be a U-turn as President Ekufuado announces Ghana's plastic policy on October 1? Wendy Lai, TV3 News, Accra. Well, as we wait for the president's announcement, uh, it's just right that we do have a discussion um, in line with that. Um, today, joining uh, us um, with, to have this discussion is the technical supervisor of the Water Sanitation and Hygiene Project, WASH, of the U.S. Um, Agency for International Development. Um, he's, been, he's had over 20 years of experience in this field, managing and, you know, coordinating um, development. Um, let's welcome um, Patrick Apoja. You're warmly welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine. Wonderful. Um, Just to clarify, okay. the name is Patrick Apoya. Apoya, I'm Patrick. actually here on the on the account of the Coalition of NGOs in Water and Sanitation. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you for the correction. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in 2015, um, the government at the time, um, you know, launched a partial ban mm -hmm. on plastics. 
um, and you know they brought up arguments about the um, economic effects that it would have mm. be being um, the fact that the manufacturers of you know uh, plastic um, plastics hire a great uh, amount of the population mm -hmm. today we're still having the same argument what exactly is the fundamental problem Yes, it's a, it's, it's a very big problem. Mm. Uh, as we saw from the clip, the, nobody can underestimate the damage mm. that plastics are causing to ourselves mm -hmm. and also the ecosystems, fresh water and in the oceans. You know, and there's no economic value that can compensate for that damage okay. if we were to do environmental accounting. Mm. Now, policy making is not just about what is right or what is wrong. Mm. It's also about lobbying and uh, interest, very strong interest that have a stake in an issue mm. and would fight back if it is threatened. And sometimes when a government sees that uh, there is something that needs to be streamlined by way of policy, uh, then different stakeholders also have to come in with their, their, with their viewpoints, okay. which I think is fair, but it is left for us to dialogue and see what is it that the country uh, uh, desires mm -hmm. and what do we uh, which path do we choose to, to, to tread on? The economic arguments are okay. Okay. But if we fix the same economic arguments on the Galamse, which we have seen, the economic uh, arguments and the livelihoods that Galamse supported would more than 15 times dwarf the economic uh, 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 contribution mm. and employment that plastics generate for our country. Mm. So the economic argument, it doesn't hold at all. Now, if it was not left with a very strong president who understood the environmental consequences of Galamsey mm -hmm. and single-handedly said, I don't want to see this, mm. and the media coming together, agreeing with it and supporting it, there's mm -hmm. no way we would have reached where we are today. But the idea was not to crash Galamsey. The okay. idea was to streamline it in a manner that it will uh, be more sustainable to the environment and to our future. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come to plastics, it is a good idea. And when the, even before the 2015, there was an earlier threat under President Mills that plastics could be banned. Okay. And uh, in response to that, the Plastics uh, uh, Manufacturers Association of Ghana, uh, which was mainly the, the sachet water producers and those other who produce the finished products, mm. they on their own accord actually mobilized their members to set up uh, a fund okay. uh, that will support uh, uh, recycling yes and they organize these pickers to go yes. around and pick and they will buy back yes. the plastics as their contribution to the menace now you would expect that wherever there's a business definitely you shouldn't even see plastics on the on the ground mm. but there are two challenges about that okay first the behaviors of individual uh, members okay. uh, does not support handling the plastics in a way that the value is retained so mm. that if you pick it you can actually recycle it for money okay Plastics which is useful as long as it's not contaminated. So okay. long as you drop it on the soil, it is very expensive to clean and the cost even exceeds the cost of virgin plastics. So why would I leave virgin plastics at a lower cost and go and buy soil plastics to be cleaning uh, at a higher cost? The second thing is our government really doesn't understand what it means to actually crank a sector. Now, if you see that there's a social and or there's a, a particular interest in this, mm -hmm. government's role in also seeing what do we do to encourage this business. Yeah. Government doesn't even understand that there is something to be done there. Okay. So it is just left into the hands of uh, the voluntary plastic uh, manufacturers okay. and people who don't have a job and think, oh, I can sell plastics for one this or one that. Uh, so for those two problems, we haven't really seen much traction in okay. the recycling. Now, we produce 22,500 tons. Yeah of plastics per day that's the waste that we generate 22,500 tons of plastics per, per day. day and that per day there are 25 recycling companies in ghana uh, accra there are 10 of them tema yeah. there are 10 kumasi is uh, 25 yeah. uh, kumasi is three and uh, uh, takradi is two yeah so these 25 companies how are they how are they going to recycle 22,500 tons of plastics per day mm. They recycle, they recycle together. Yeah. They recycle only 320 tons of the 22,500 that we generate in a day, which is even, that is 1.4%, less than what we even saw from the UNDP yeah. statistics. Now, if over 10 years, yeah. all we can recycle is 1.4 uh, 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 tons per day, 
there is no way you can say that recycling will be able to absorb that. Yeah. And it is not to say because the six point okay for those who are recycling, yeah. I think the waste companies they mm. pay about six point seven million CDs mm. per day for those who are able to pick and right. sell to them. Okay. Which ag agreeable is a big business. Yes. It can support a large chunk of the population. Yeah. But what we are saying is, if you compare that to the the, the, the the damages it is causing, and it is not only environmental damage, yeah. the negative effects on our economy, mm -hmm. if you think about it, mm -hmm. it is negative growth. It's not positive growth. Your plastic menace, yeah. you know you have a very long coastline. Okay. Over 200, uh, uh, over 100 kilometers of that coastline is potentially very productive in tourism terms. Yes. If you go to Sierra Leone and yes. just see their beach, their beach site, yeah. the economic contribution of that one day yeah. that you see, I think is more than all our 100 kilometers of uh, <laughs> potentially touristic. The touristic value has been 100% eroded. First by plastic waste, yeah. second by open defecation. Mm. If you remove those, these two things, yeah. dislocating a livelihood in one area yeah. of plastic, yeah. cleaning it will be substituted by probably three times that livelihood in another area. Okay. And that is how we should always look at the argument. It's not just about because I am there, I shouldn't mm -hmm. be touched. Right. But if I am touched, are there other ways that my livelihood can be transformed? Formed. Okay. That is where I think we should be heading towards. Okay. And I'm not worried about what the minister said then. Okay. I believe our president is very environmentally conscious. Okay. And he's very strong about what he feels is good for the people of Ghana. Okay. I will personally be very highly disappointed if I don't see any clause on some intention to ban. Mm. The intention to ban means if you say this is a solution, yes. the state should be willing to give all those actors another opportunity. Okay. But with more support and more uh, policy and legal, uh, a, a more suitable legal framework okay. that will allow people to be able to enter the waste business uh very easily mm -hmm. uh with not the intention of that you are uh, making only profits but you're also cleaning the environment. the environment now if you give them that opportunity with the conditions that they need to thrive another five years would prove whether we can move from two percent uh, currently okay. to anywhere close to ten percent okay uh or fifteen percent okay or we can say if we do not want to ban then you must what the ndc government uh, proposed then was that mm -hmm. instead of saying that you will not you will not produce will allow you to produce but you but. must incorporate a biodegradable a biodegradable ingredient yes in your plastic okay it will raise the prices higher mm -hmm. but it also guarantees that instead of a plastic taking between 200 to 500 years to decompose it will not decompose in two three years okay so if people are if our lives are now tight so tightly linked to the plastics and we cannot disengage then we should be willing to pay a little higher okay so there are options to deal with the situation yes uh it's not just about saying i have banned it or i have not banned Band it. it okay but to say that banning is out of the equation mm. it will be a sign of a little irresponsibility okay. on the part of government so let's let's look at um you know individuals what individuals can do about this yeah. um it's been done in kenya it's been done in rwanda it's been done um, tanzania, tanzania is actually doing, doing that now. now yes exactly um and kigali apparently is the cleanest city in africa right now Correct. is it beyond us as a people of ghana and are we ready to do this as a people of ghana mm -hmm. uh naturally as biological human beings that god created it is not beyond us okay but as human beings carrying a form of democracy it is beyond us mm. if i tell you what it took the rwanda to reach where they have reached i don't know if we are able to tolerate it <laughs> physical whipping you drop mm. slaps they will slap you oh. openly so it combined behavior mm -hmm. enforcement and sometimes brute and after three years everybody learned that this one is a no-go area yeah there's no such thing as behavior change. And that we are just preaching a time will come where all of us will understand we are doing it for the good of our country, okay. everything. There's nothing like that. Mm. You change your behavior first because you know there will be a reward associated with that behavior. behavior. Personally, according to you, and if there are any uh, uh, excesses that go to society, yeah. fine. But they look at what benefits I get. Mm -hmm. And secondly, for fear of sanctions. Okay. If there's no fear of sanctions, just thinking that the mo the motivation to change because I will benefit my country. Mm. Forget it. It doesn't happen. 
Okay, so uh, my former assemblyman actually summarized it. Yes. Uh, he was pilfering a few things from locations. Mm -hmm. And when we confronted him, he was bold to tell us that nobody just jumps into politics because he wants to help his village. Okay. He first must survive before, before he can he think about his the village. Other people. Okay. So, it's, and I, I think even though people condemned him, I think it is a summary of what a typical human being's inner feeling is like. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, give us a practical ways that we as citizens can also help reduce the plastic menace. You know, how do we practically, how can we cut down on the plastic waste so that, you know, we don't have this much of an issue? First, uh, even if you eliminate the, the brute aspect of the Rwandan approach, yeah. and you just left with the legal system of enforcement okay that alone we are 80 percent through the problem of enforcing a ban okay that is if we go the way of a ban okay uh the reason why i'm saying so is even the current issues of sanitation enforcement which is related to use of toilets if you don't there are laws let's say you must have a toilet in your house okay. you cannot defecate in the open mm -hmm. but when even the health of the environmental health and sanitation officers in their legal in the course of their legal duties mm -hmm. arrest people or i mean summon people okay and get them to the course and they're prosecuting and and, and let me tell you those people that you call sama sama mm -hmm. they have the status of a state prosecutor mm. they are prosecutors yeah. so when they go to court they prosecute themselves okay they don't hire but any person to do we as a people individuals what can we also do for but for we as a people yes corners what what i think the only way we can get we as a people to to succeed is to have an incentive to change okay and that incentive is i think usid through global communities but okay. then it was called uh, uh, chf okay uh, their model which was um, uh, tried in over five thousand households in accra mm -hmm. it did work okay what they did was to ensure that you separate your waste then you were assigned somebody okay. that when it reaches a certain quantity, okay. you could call, they'll come away, and you get your payment there and then. Okay. So when people realize that, uh, even if I, I, I call it this one, I'm able to pay my utility bill. Okay. I'm able to even pay for the rest of my solid waste. Yeah. It became an incentive okay. for them. But as soon as the project ended and they left, the public authorities could not continue okay. uh, with that initiative. So if we can attach an incentive to source separation of waste okay it is one way that people will be motivated to change to change okay another way is well the sanctions that i was talking about earlier okay if there is a sanction associated with polluting uh, your environment why in the first place are people still not signing on to the waste collectors that have been given to them yeah but the political interference of somebody is arrested assemblyman will quickly come and start yes. maneuvering to lease a person yes uh, if we do not get that off the other side of the equation mm -hmm. that will support the self-motivation to change will never be there okay. and we can change. So essentially two ways, yes. um, you know, waste separation, we should be encouraged to do waste separation and yes. the government should support us in that light. Yes. And then sanctions should also be applied. Correct. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Patrick Apoya, for joining us this morning on New Day. Uh, we're talking about how you can also help to reduce the plastic menace. Bella will be joining us shortly with an interview with Tiny. So you stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break.